Okay, then we'll move on to item number six. Any uh, items of interest from the commissioners for future agenda items? Um, well, I had one and it's, it's a little late tonight, so maybe another time. I don't know if, if other people would be interested in talking about, you know, uh, adding an option to make a formal entrance to the, the, uh, the trail by the maintenance facility that connects to Quietwood to make that an actual uh, entrance. And I, I don't know that that's something that needs to happen right now. I don't think it's something that could be, you know, we could stand up you know, necessarily quickly enough um, around the timing of the construction that's ongoing there. But um, I've been looking at that space and there's been some recent discussion about it. Um, it sure would be nice actually to have another pathway that's accessible, that's ADA accessible there on Quietwood to connect those two loops, right? So there's one path a little further down on Quietwood that's ADA accessible. Um, and I see a lot of a lot of people trying to walk through that area, like you know somebody walking with their mom and things like that. Um, and when they do get to the you know the the maintenance area, well, right now, right because the fence is there, it's a bit of a disappointment for them. They kind of try to figure out where to go, and they can't kind of get up that that uh, informal slope on Quietwood. That there's kind of another exit there. So I just was curious whether the commission was interested in, I don't know if we have like a capital projects list or how we think about what we might do, you know, year to year, but it's something that I'd be interested in is actually making that, you know, kind of an accessible entrance to the trail back there. It would make a nice little loop um, for people who have, uh, you know, kind of limited mobility, another addition. I know we have that in the park. Sometimes the park can be pretty busy with kids' bicycles and things like that, and it just could be a nice addition to the community over there. So I just put that out there, maybe. For yeah, and about it I sometime. actually meant to bring this up um, because uh, I, I spaced it and forgot on it. I yeah. Just acknowledge and put on the record that uh, the commission did receive a correspondence from Linda Barnello regarding that, um, who has brought this topic up, you know, on multiple occasions. Um, and the commission has discussed this on multiple occasions, including during tours of that very specific area. Um, and, you know, the consensus has always been to leave that as it is. One thing Luke and I have talked about doing is putting up some more clear signage right there, um, you know, that indicates it's a, uh, you know, something along the lines of a, uh, you know, slippery conditions proceed with caution so that people are aware in the interim. Um, and then, uh, you know, as we've kind of discussed in the past, as you're, you know, going into looking at larger modifications, that's, that becomes a pretty big project and you then again get into, you know, potential levels of permitting and compliance and uh, maintenance and things like that too. So, you know, it's up to the commission if it's something that they would want to discuss again. Um, it has been discussed, uh, and I guess this is probably a little bit right before you joined the commission. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it certainly is a topic that's been discussed multiple times. And the yeah. you know the kind of consensus recommendation was always to leave that as is. Uh, you know, recognizing that there are you know three other entrance points on there that are much more accessible. Um, and then as I had uh, you know brought up the. When they redid all the sidewalks, uh, you know, with the things, uh, and I have an old communication I got to find as well um, that talk about that specific area and reasons why the county didn't include that as a curb cut um, and a safety and actually removed the sidewalk from that point as well. So I'll have to find that as well because it, it, it actually kind of bolstered the commission's general thoughts on why we haven't. Uh, why we've decided to kind of leave that area as it is, uh, which is, you know, kind of a long standing and long multiple discussed, but I, I, you know, I leave it up to the commission, whether they want something like that on a future agenda. My general sense is that this has been discussed kind of in great detail in the past already. Too. Yeah. I don't know if John or John have anything else to add. You know, I'm 
happy to talk about it again. I think my opinion on that is consistent with where it's been. Um, if, you know, it's, I, I don't want to be in the situation where we're micromanaging um, Luke's time and Luke's staff time and juggling his priorities because I don't fully know the full breadth of priorities he has. I mean, we talk about a lot here, but I don't know everything. So um, with that said, if, if this is a big concern for the community, then I, then I think we should, um, we should address it. Um, that I've not been led to believe that it is a big concern from the community. So I think the last time we looked at it, it's just kind of like we could keep it the way it is because we're, it's, it hasn't been, my perception is it's not a big concern. Um, and I know there was some conversation about making that an ADA pathway and, you know, just, but just for some clarification, ADA, ADA is for the built environment, for pavement, concrete pathways, things like that. When you're on earth and trails, um, ADA doesn't apply. So we could make it more accessible, um, that connection from the pavement to the earth and trail, but it, it wouldn't be an ADA connection. Um, you know, Marin County Parks, we have something called inclusive access plan which you know, has its own set of guidelines uh, regarding grade and cross slope and firm and stable surface and whatnot. Um, so that applies more to earthen pathways. And, and that's something we could certainly do if we think it um, is a priority. I think my other concern would be that if it was to be ADA compliant, on the pathway, then it would also have to be changed out at the street because you can't lead from an ADA point to a non-ADA point. Yeah. So that would require then also a curb cut on the street and the truncated domes and the you know the whole shot. So it, it, it would be quite an involved project because you'd have to be doing the construction in the park and then also construction on the street. So if we could meet John's perspective of path compliance, then we don't have to meet ADA compliance at, the, at Quietwood as well. It might be something cool if there's a way to do it where it makes it more accessible, but we're not you know, bound to have to follow you know, strict ADA with a full ramp and regrading and everything. Some way to put in some stairs or just something like that. I just think it would be a value add. I so for context, like I live like right by there, so I take my dog out every day and throw the ball for him on the path behind Quietwood. So I just see how many people ap approach that slope, and it would just might be kind of a lovely value add in the community to have that that particular point be something that is a little bit easier to access. It's less I think about like a a concern and more like. I mean, that was initially what got me thinking about it was the, the concern letter. But then I just opened my mind up and was like, you know, this would be really lovely. It could be really nice to have a little bit better access right there. It just creates, um, you know, opens it for more people to be able to, to, to use that path. You know, I, I'm thought. certainly happy to talk about it uh, some more, and especially with your perspective. Um, so I, I think that would be great. And we did talk about things that we could do. Um, I remember the last time we looked at it, we talked about, you know, cause it's, it's steep from the pavement or concrete or whatever it is to the down to the, you know, the maintenance path, it's a steep grade change. And so we could build a earthen ramp, um, you know, and we could even potentially do it with volunteers. Um, so like things like that could be done. Um, but again, I, I've not been led to believe that it's, um, that it's concerning for a lot of people. If, if that's not true, then I'm all for increasing accessibility. If, if it's a limitation for people. Uh, here's what I would suggest again, and I'm happy to, you know, follow up. I, I think that we're getting into a little bit too detailed of a conversation on this specific topic for an item that hasn't been agendized. 
So if this is something that we want to agendize for a future meeting, then that is the path that we should go. Um, no pun intended here with talking about a path, but uh, otherwise, you know, getting into too much of a conversation on this, I think you're starting to, uh, uh, you know, flirt with some compliance issues. So it's either something we talk about in detail at a later meeting or not. And then I'm also happy to meet with you offline about this uh, as well. Um, Cause I do have, you know, also concerns um, that are counter to the points that were made in terms of liability that when you start making improvements, you actually take on more liability than uh, leaving it in its natural state. So uh, all things to talk I, about. I don't know about that, Eric. I, I'm not sure. I mean, we could talk about that more, but I, I don't know if I would agree with that statement. Yeah, well, when some of the things that we've talked about, you know, putting in steps or things along. Yeah, line, so. well, steps are handrails, but if it's an earthen ramp, right. you know. Right, yes, yeah. that's, uh, you and I are on the same page. These are my points. So uh, at any rate, um, again, if it's something we want to put on a future agenda to be discussed properly, then that's how we should do it. Yeah. Otherwise, we get too far into the and the penalty side of funding to ultimately was a correspondence. But it, it seems like there's enough interest to speak about it or agendize it for a meeting. We could do it in our January meeting. We could welcome yeah. uh, Ian, who I'm sure would have some perspective on that as well. Yeah. So... Yeah, and you'll have another uh, commissioner at that point, too. And then if it's agendized, it gives public opportunity to come in and speak to it as well, if they so choose. So we can, let's move in that direction, then. OK. Uh, any other future agenda? I guess we're good. And we'll uh, move to item number seven, which is the adjournment. You know what? It looks like you have a public comment here, John, on the future agenda things. Can you hold one second? Public can comment on our agenda items? Uh, yeah, they can make a comment about future agenda items. It, uh, there's no... Uh, inclination that those items will be brought onto the agenda, but they're allowed to make a comment about it, sure, or a suggestion. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, you know, that I, I'm so happy that Anne has uh, brought up the point of the ramp. We've actually been talking about this for years. And I live on Quiet Wood Drive. I walk that area every single day. And um, I see seniors in particular, people with mobility issues. They like walking in that area because it's flat, because it's accessible, because it's nice and it's close to the neighborhoods. And um, John Campo had the solution that we've all thought that would work and it would be very simple it wouldn't require a, a lot of money um, which is an earthen ramp um, you know with a handrail this is what you see in in parks all the time it is very very frustrating uh, to receive the report that oh there hasn't been any a conversation about it there's been a lot of conversation about it but apparently because it comes from me and it comes from Linda Barnello who are the only members of the public to participate in um, our local community outside you you board members uh, you know it it just gets brushed aside but we ha we have literally hundreds of people walking in that area every day and the only Anne is correct. The only thing that that area lacks is an ease um, uh, and accessible. And I, I guess we have to be careful about our language. But we want some, you know, someone with limited mobility to be able to walk up a ramp to get up to that road. It doesn't require. A, a, there's no 
reason to catastrophize here. There, I don't think there's a reason to put a curb cut and make this uh, a big engineering project. Basically, it's just a fortified ramp, a, a retaining wall uh, uh, on an angle. And you're right. I mean, if if push comes to shove, it could be a, a volunteer effort. I don't. I I'm sure you could do it almost. You know, you you've got the little cats. It really there's not a lot of equipment, a lot not a lot of lumber involved here. You know, just do it really, and and it would be a wonderful addition. So I, I'm all f for that, and I I appreciate that Anne has brought that up and the suggestions by John Campo to make it simple and organic, and let's stay away from the ADA language because that's that that uh, becomes a political or that becomes a liability issue but we can we can certainly make it a better better way to access our park so i encourage you to to discuss it and vote on it and do it thank you all right we have it on our agenda for our next meeting steven so you can bring your comments back then Anything else from the commissioners? Then I seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. A second. A second.